For today's lesson, we're going to look at descriptive writing. So what is descriptive writing? Descriptive writing is a piece of writing, or so it's an essay in which you use words that give the readers details they need to visualize what you are saying and to experience the events or scenarios that you talk about throughout the essay. Now, within the essay, there are certain things that you should include. For example, adjectives, as well as things that appeal to the five senses to assist your reader with having the same experience that you have. So we're going to look at four things, just four things to do that you should include within your descriptive essay to enhance your reader's experience. The first thing is that you want to use your five senses. Two, use primitive language. Three, you want to be creative with your word usage or you want to have fun with words. And four, you want to show, don't tell. Let's look at the first one. Using your senses, there are five senses. Taste, feel, smell, touch, and hear. It's very important that when you are developing your descriptive essay that you use language that will appeal to the reader's five senses. Now, in some instances, it might be impossible to, for you to target all of the senses but at least two or three should be a part of your description. And you don't want to be vague with your description and, and that's why we're going to say use figurative language and I don't want to go too into detail as to how you can go about um, appealing to those senses because I'll be touching on the other topics, but you want to be very explicit not inappropriate, but you want to be very explicit in terms of the language that you use in describing the sounds that were at the event or, or within this experience, especially the taste and the sound. To use figurative language. Now, one and two connect. Because figurative language is one of the ways that you can appeal to the five senses. And I do have a mini lesson that's available on figurative and literal. It talks about the literal meaning of words as well as the figurative meaning of words. So if you need more information about literal and figurative, then you can go ahead and watch that video. But for this lesson, there's just a few Figurative devices mentioned here that might appeal to the five senses, for example, similes, metaphors, they're both comparisons. Um, personification is when we give a, a non like a non human or an inanimate object, human like qualities. And hyperbole is an, is an extreme exaggeration, just being an idea of what those two figurative devices are. And of course, when you're writing, you want the reader to be a part of the experience. So when I say appeal to the five senses, you want to be sure to don't just say um, the wind blew the tree. Instead, you might want to say the tree danced in the island breeze. That statement, it doesn't only tell the reader that the trees were moving, it also gives the reader an idea of the kind of breeze that was blowing. Okay, 
So you want to be very detailed in what it is that you're saying within your descriptive essay. And I do have an example here. My heart started beating fast. Instead of saying that, if it's so vague and it's a simple sentence, it doesn't give us much to imagine, but it does um, say what was happening in that moment. It just doesn't have any effect on the reader. So instead of saying that, let's just say, my heart beats out of my chest. Now that particular statement, it lets us know how fearful or how excited the, the person within this essay or the person within this description was. It gives us an exact feeling. Three, you want to have fun with words. It's very, very important that you use your synonyms and synonyms are words that are similar in meaning. Okay, so you want to use your synonyms. So instead of saying a writer all of the time, you might want to say author or poet or playwright or scribe or word. You want to vary your words within your essay. Another thing that you might want to use, there are, there's a list here, right? But you want to play on your words. You want to play on your words to show that, show the reader or the examiner, because you're going to be taking the BAC, that you know how to effectively use your words. So there are other types of words here homophones, homonyms, heteronyms. You want to vary your words. And the last one, you want to show, don't tell. It's very important that as you develop your essay, you don't give too much detail. You want the reader to imagine some of the experiences. So let's look at the example. He walked over to the stage and they gave him the award. It's a vague sentence. It doesn't really give us a lot of information other than that. He got the award. Oh, an award was presented to him. There's very little to you there. Let's look at the other example. Both on the same, but it gives us a little more information. His feet felt like they were walking on air. So this can tell how proud he felt. You can assume that he was proud in this moment. It, 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 that statement alone, as opposed to the first one, gives the reader more to imagine or more to interpret. As he glided toward the stage, so it tells how he moved, how he walked. An award like this was a dream he could never have imagined coming true. So I want you to pay close attention to the first statement. He walked over to the stage and they gave him the award. And look at the second one, look at how details it is we also have our figurative device in there and our last sentence an award like this was a dream he could never have imagined this particular statement it alludes to the fact that this particular moment for that character at one point was impossible. It was something that was not attainable, something that was not achievable. So in that moment, there's a sense of, of accomplishment, there's a sense of pride, and there might also be a sense of humility. And we're only able to interpret that based on what is presented to us. In the second paragraph, the first 
in the second um, example, the first example doesn't give us much information. It doesn't give us much interest. But okay, he walked on the stage, he got in a water. Okay. But the second example gives us a better experience as the reader as to what that moment meant to the character. So as you're writing your descriptive acting, it's very important that you don't tell the reader. You show them with your use of language and your use of structure. Thank you for watching this recorded lesson on descriptive writing. And I hope that you find the information presented in today's session useful.